AbV stock has seen a huge sell-off over the past few days. Look at this. In the past five days, the stock is down over 12.76%, and if we look at the past month, they're currently down around 10%. Now, we have plenty of news to get to. Why are they down so much? The company also released their latest quarter's earnings fairly recently, and they announced a dividend hike. So, plenty of things to touch on, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the big news surrounding AbV is they saw a huge decline after missing their main goal in a schizophrenia treatment trial. If we come down, we can see shares dropped around 11% in a single day after their mid-stage trials for treatment for adults with schizophrenia did not meet their primary endpoint. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, last year, the company put up $8.7 billion for an acquisition to get Cerevel Therapeutics last year who had the schizophrenia drug. So this was a huge dollar amount that they put up. And so obviously, they want to see a big return on that investment. But so far, we're seeing that this big investment is definitely not paying off. If we come down here and look at this statement from Wells Fargo, we can see, we think emerlachodine failure is a big surprise and significant negative for AbbVie since it makes people question the pipeline strength for the company. Now, the key word right here is pipeline. Whenever we talk about a pharmaceutical or drug company like AbbVie, their growth is entirely dependent upon what's in the pipeline for the company. What new drugs are they going to be offering to the market? And these types of companies that have strong pipelines typically are going to see strong growth. And so, yes, this was a huge setback for AbbVie. And if we look at the flip side, Bristol Myers Squibb, stock ticker BMY, they actually received FDA approval for its schizophrenia drug in September and they've gained 13%. So not only did AbbVie's drug not work well, their competitor's drug actually received FDA approval. So it starts to become pretty clear why AbbVie saw a huge sell-off over the past month, and especially in the past five days. This was a huge hit for the company. Now, for the past decade, AbbVie has been a dividend stock that investors absolutely love. And if we look at the dividend metrics, you'll see why. I'll come up here and plug in their stock ticker. And what you'll see is the starting dividend yield for this company is really nice, sitting at 3.75%. But the 10-year dividend CAGR has also been phenomenal at 15% in the five-year, sitting at 9%. So a phenomenal combination of starting dividend yield and dividend growth. And this has all been backed by growing free cash flow over the past decade. And real quick, like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import stock financials straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So again, easy to see why people are excited about AbbVie stock. Now, does this recent sell-off present a buying opportunity? Well, we need to dig into the earnings report and some recent news just a little bit more. Now, if you don't currently own AbbVie, one of the things I do want to point out, if you own SCHD, you actually have exposure to AbbVie. This is one of their top holdings. If we scroll down, we can see AbbVie right here. It looks like it's currently its sixth largest holding in SCHD, so that is something to keep in mind. Now, if we start going through this recent quarter's earnings report, we can see Q3 non-GAAP earnings per share came in at $3, which was a beat by $0.08, cents, and top lines. Revenue came in at 14 0.46 billion, up about 3.8% year over year, and was a beat by about 180 million. So they saw beats on top and bottom lines. And the company also recently announced a 5.8% dividend increase. Now that's a decent dividend hike, but we do have to keep in mind, it's definitely below that 10-year average and below that five-year dividend CAGR as well. So what's the reason for the lower dividend hike? Well, obviously the dividend hike is decided by management, but there's something that I'm a little bit suspicious of, and it's been a concern of mine for Abby for quite some time. If we start to scroll down, one of the things you have to understand about AbbVie is their largest revenue driver over the past decade has been a drug called Humira. And to put this into context, look at the revenue they're bringing in from Humira in 2022 and 2023. It is a significant amount of the company's entire revenue. But AbbVie recently, over the past year, lost their patent to Humira. And because of that, they've started to face knockoffs in the US from the likes of Amgen, stock ticker AMGN, beginning early last year. And so people expected a significant decline in revenue from this drug, and that's exactly what happened. We can see Humira net revenue dropped around 37% year over year, so a very large drop in revenue from Humira. But the good news is AbbVie actually saw gains in other areas. So for example, here's revenue from Humira. We can see the steady decline over the past few quarters, and you can see exactly when they lost their patent. But look at the revenue coming in from these other drugs. We're still seeing decent growth, and this growth for AbbVie has been a huge deal, and it's been very needed. So this is definitely one of the positives for the company, but it's easy to see why the stock saw a huge sell-off after they lost their Humira patent, combined with the failure of their most recent schizophrenia treatment drug. Now, like I mentioned earlier, AbbVie paid $8.7 billion to acquire the company that provided the schizophrenia drug, but it's not completely lost hope. The acquisition brought some other drugs into their pipeline as well. If we scroll down, we can see this acquisition also brought them a drug that is in phase three for Parkinson's disease, and if we scroll down a little bit more, it brought them a drug that's in phase two for dementia-related problems. So this did bring more into the pipeline. Now, if we jump over to my stock screener, come up here and plug in ABVV, 
what we'll see when we look at revenue per share. We can see it grew for the majority of the past decade, but they actually saw a decline in 2023, which was expected again due to losing that Humira pattern. And earnings in 2023 dropped pretty significantly as well. Now, if we look at earnings expectations for Avi moving forward, jump over to earnings and earnings estimates, what we can see is 2024, earnings aren't really expected to grow that much again. In fact, they're expecting negative 1.54% year over year growth. But after that, we can see for the next couple of years, they're expecting double digit earnings growth and then it will start to slow down. Now, again, when we look this far into the future with a pharmaceutical drug company, again, it always boils down to what do they have in the pipeline? When we start talking about four to five years in advance, it's really hard to predict what that earnings growth will look like. It completely depends on their pipeline. Now, one of the other bright spots is if we jump over to the profitability and income statement sheet, we can see the gross profit ratio has seen some nice increases over the past couple of years. In 2022, it was sitting right at 70%, and in 2023, it jumped all the way up to 83.84%. But if we look at the gross profit ratio for this most recent quarter using the ticker data add-on, I'll plug in A, B, B, V, we'll select gross profit ratio, 2024, and then the most recent quarter. And when I hit enter, you can see it's all the way down to around 71.17%, which is pretty significantly lower than the overall gross profit ratio in 2023. So overall, when I look at AbbVie, when I look at the historical financials, the pipeline and the recent news, there's plenty of ups and there's plenty of downs surrounding the company. And as we can see now, the company's trading right in the middle of its 52 week range. So we have to ask the question, is the company trading at a good value? And to answer that question, let's go ahead and jump over to my stock valuation spreadsheet. We'll come up here and plug in ABBV. And one of the things we'll notice is the company does have a pretty low beta, so you should see lower levels of volatility. Now, the first valuation we're going to look at is going to be Graham's valuation. So we'll go ahead and zoom in over here. We can see the formula laid out here. If we come down, basically we're valuing the company based on the earnings per share and the growth of that expected earnings per share while also taking into account current market conditions. So we can see the estimated earnings per share average being automatically brought in with the ticker data function. And then we're applying a growth rate projection. Now, growth rate projections for companies like Abby can be a little bit difficult. So we're gonna go for the middle of analyst expectations. Some have it a little bit higher over the next few years and some have it a little bit lower, but I'm going with seven. Then come down here, we plug in the current yield of AAA corporate bonds. And at the time of this video, it's sitting at 4.67, which will drive down this valuation a little bit. And we can see we come to an intrinsic value of around $144 per share. Now, the next valuation we'll look at is going to be our discounted cash flow analysis. And basically, we're valuing the company based on the future free cash flow they're projected to produce. So we can see we're projecting free cash flow growth of 6% moving forward through 2032 and then finding the terminal value adding all those future free cash flows together and adding their cash and cash equivalent, subtracting out total debt to get equity value, divide by shares outstanding, and we come to a DCF price per share of $201.81. Now the next valuation we'll look at is multiples. And I don't think this tells the whole story, but if we look at somewhat similar companies, the average PE multiple is sitting about 20.56 and earnings per share for AVI projected to be about 10.92. So we come to an intrinsic value of $224.64 per share. But if we jump back over to Seeking Alpha and look at how AVI's historically traded, we can see if we look at price to earnings non-gap for the trailing 12 months, AVI's sitting at 16.23 while their five-year average is about 11.69. So it looks like they're overvalued based off of that. Same is true if we do it forward looking. And then if we use price to earnings gap, meaning generally accepted accounting principles, the same remains true. It looks like they're slightly overvalued compared to how they've historically traded. So that is something to keep in mind as you look at valuations like the multiples valuation. Now, the last valuation model we'll look at is going to be our dividend discount model. And we're valuing the company based on how much they pay out in dividends and how much that dividend is projected to increase in the future. And we can see in the scenario, we're projecting a dividend growth rate of 5% moving forward. And with the discount rate of 9%, we come to a dividend discount model price per share of $172.20, pretty close to that current trading price. So if we jump over to the output tab, we can see the four valuation models we used all averaged together come to an intrinsic value of $185.67 which is a little bit above that current trading price of $175. So with the 10% margin of safety, we could see our acceptable buy price coming in at about $167.10. So before this recent sell-off was AbbVie overvalued, at the time they were trading just a little bit above $200 a share. In reality, I think it's kind of hard to say because growth is so dependent on the pipeline for these types of companies and it makes projecting growth pretty difficult. Now that being said, like I've mentioned earlier, the company does have a phenomenal dividend history when it comes to the starting yield. When it comes to the dividend growth rates and the history of dividend increases and the free cash flow covering those dividend payments. 
So as for me personally, I don't actually own Avi, but again, I own SCHD. SCHD is a large position in my portfolio, so I do have quite a bit of exposure to this company. So go ahead and let me know in the comments down below what you think of Avi. And like always, if you'd like to be able to download any of my spreadsheets and also get access to the ticker data add-on in Google Sheets that allows you to automatically import Stock Financial straight into your spreadsheet, then you can head over to tickerdata.com at the link in the description. So with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel.